Hey guys, it's Jenna Elfman from Fear the Walking Dead. I play Laura. No, I play Naomi. No, I play June. I play June on Fear the Walking Dead. And you're listening to the Fear the Walking Dead talk through on Talk Through Media. That was awesome. Hey, I'm Lindsay Register and I play Laura on The Walking Dead. You're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through on Talk Through Media. <laughs> Survivors, welcome to episode 70 of Fear the Walking Dead Talk. I'm Kyle. And I'm Brian. And I'm LT. Hey. Uh, we will be covering Fear the Walking Dead Season 6, Episode 3, Alaska. And we will also be covering The Walking Dead World Beyond Season 1, Episode 4, titled The Wrong End of a Telescope. In limited capacity. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. We, we just, We've already done that part. We had enough to save about that one this time. <laughs> it was still. But, yeah. And and like last week, I will be in this episode for some of it and not for some of it. So, you know. So, yeah. If you, if you hear it kind of seems like it jumps, it's because we recorded some previous. <laughs> but no big deal. Uh, let's get started. Um, but before we do, we have additional feedback from Fear of the Walking Dead Season 6, Episode 2. Welcome to the club. And this comes from Erin from the internet. And she posted on the blog about this episode. <laughs> she quotes, but we're charming? UNLT, but not that charming. <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing beyond. Ha. Huh. Don't, don't, ha- you don't have to. It, it's okay, Erin. Trust, trust <laughs> us. Okay, it, we work hard so you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. Uh, uh, she also says, "No body, no death." Brian Madison could return if they're smart or desperate for ratings. I feel that one will come first. They they sure could bring her back. I just don't feel that they will. So, or at least at this point that we've seen where yeah. they would do that. But yep. Uh, she goes about us saying rawhide. She LOL'd on that. Um, <laughs> she also is like, like, screw the people. Where's my cat? She says, that's uh, is Daniel for sure. <laughs> yep. Uh, I can support Lenny James on the show behind the camera. I like Dakota and agree the casting for her was great. And yes, Kyle, they totally should have done um, part of the door when or door then closed it and then do more and closed it. Uh, maybe they're going to do a Charlie Dakota episode. If they want to do more queer relationships, give me Alicia Athea. I do agree, Kyle. It makes no sense for Charlie to be part of the group originally. Thank you. <laughs> she survived, I guess. You know, I, st- I still, I still don't like her. <laughs> you did get a little bit of that this week, but it wasn't Alicia Althea. Um, no. Yeah. Uh, and I'm with LT. I think the key is just a random key that doesn't really open anything nearby, actually. It's the key to our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> it's symbolism. But I guess, you know, we'll see what that all, you know, does. All right. Well, that was it um, for feedback from um, the last episode. So let's continue with this week's episode, which is Fear the Walking Dead, Season 6, Episode 3, Alaska. Uh, it was written by Mallory Westfall, directed by Coleman Domingo. And this is his second di- uh, directorial debut, I believe. Uh, I, he think did- he's, I think he's done more than that. For Fear? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I'll have to- I, I will check. Uh, and then the description is Al and Dwight go rogue on a recon mission for Ginny to follow a lead, though lost, but Al must choose between what she has now and what she's chasing. I already have an answer for you. Okay. <laughs> this is his third uh, episode that he's directed. He directed season four, episode 12, Week. Season five, episode three, Home Bugs Gulch. Gulch. Okay. The, I, that, uh, uh, I right. forgot the week one. That right. was with yeah. the nasty lady. Yeah. And there was also a section with, I think, Althea and and uh june in the in the um uh, m rep 
So, well, good. It's like I really enjoy this episode, so I'm, I, you know, keep him, yeah. <laughs> keep yeah. him coming because okay. good. And Humbug's Gulch, that was the one where we first uh, encountered Dwight. So right. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go on to our ratings, LT. I'm giving this one eight and a half out of ten. Steve Perry is back on the soundboard. <laughs> All right. If you don't have that one, I will get it for you. <laughs> I, I don't have that one. I don't believe. Oh, <laughs> uh, um, I gave it an eight. Creative visionaries wasted headshots on the wall. I gave this one an eight and a half. Uh, unexpected family reunions. So it was. It was good. It was yeah. good. Yeah. Good way to end it. Yeah. All right. Well, that was ours. So let's go to our listening ratings. Uh, you want to take the first one, LT? I shall. Glennis from Toronto says eight and a half out of 10 ratty walkers. <laughs> Renee from Atlanta gave it a six out of 10. Aw. <laughs> heart emoji, heart emoji, heart emoji. Clint from Indianapolis gives it 8.67 skunk beers for this episode. So <laughs> far, fear is three for three this season. Nice. And Deanna from Detroit gives it an 8 out of 10. Dwayne and Sherry are back together again. Oh, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the last one is uh, Aaron from the Internet. And I would give this a solid 8 apocalyptic love stories out of 10. And then I actually left her um, feedback in here because there's some things that she brings up in her sauce eye that are appropriate to, or what were mentioned in the feedback. So that's why I'm bringing it up here. I'll be honest and say this episode was a little slow at times being in one location for most of the episode. And there didn't seem like there was as much disgust as last week, but on the whole, I enjoyed it. All I have to say, Aaron, you don't know slow. <laughs> you do not know slow until you've watched world beyond, beyond. <laughs> dwight and al's friendship is sweet and it was great seeing the good stuff of last season called back to also great dwight's hair in this episode y'all that's worth a point by itself <laughs> ha this was another episode where I felt it kind of flew by on the whole as I watched and was one I wanted to watch multiple times after the first airing. I can't say it's as good as last week because I felt there were more questions than answers after it, but I felt it was still really good on the whole. All righty. Um, all right. Well, then thank you, Aaron. Um, let's head into our awesome sauce. All right, uh, let's go with our listeners' awesome sauce. You want to go with the first one, LT? I will. Uh, Deanna from Detroit says, Morgan creating the axe steak. That is an awesome killing combination. <laughs> uh, it was cool. Uh, Glenn is from Toronto. She says, Sherry and Dwight's reunion. Renee from Atlanta says, love, love the chemistry between Al and Dwight. Dwight and Sherry's reunion. Heart, 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 heart. Finally. And Al getting to hear Isabel's voice. <laughs> and she has four little huggy emojis. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was cool. That was good. Um, <clears throat> well, Aaron from the internet, uh, as awesome sauce was besides Dwight's hair, I would have to say I love how they show the importance of physical items in this episode. They're in a world where you don't have the internet unless you're part of a team. You don't have access to the magic battery stash, so something as simple as a driver's license would be a big deal to someone given we rely so much on things to remember um, for us. I like how they use the license game to also show both the disconnect Al felt at what they were doing as a bonding element for she and Dwight because it was like a new, a new level of the game she played with her brother. It's such a simple thing, the licenses, but this episode for me made them feel so big and, it, and I really liked that. You could also very much feel, while this is a horror in genre, um, this episode was a romantic piece, and that was all well done for the combination of the two elements. 
I have to agree with that. This is mm-hmm. one of the strongest parts about this episode. I think the stronger part so far this season <laughs> is the, you know, the character interactions. Yep. And bonus awesome, Dwight's plan to use a walker to fake her, your death. It is a good and smart plan, and I would love to see them use it in the future. And I agree with that. Yep. Could be. We'll see. We shall. All right. Well, that was the rest of our listeners' awesome sauce. And let's go on to ours, LT. Okay. I'm. You're going to mention it. I'm going to mention it. <laughs> I really enjoyed the scene at the funeral home. Only because of the embalmed walker. <laughs> I thought that was so because when she first popped up, I'm going, gosh, she's so clean and neat and well quaffed. And- <laughs> yeah, I called her. I was like, the be- I was like, in my notes, I was like, beautiful walker. Because <laughs> she yes. was pretty beautiful. Like, dress was nice. Like, hair was mm-hmm. perfect. <laughs> But when when her when her mouth finally popped open, I was like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that got me. Yeah. That that was that was a, a really cool stroke on their part. The only question I had was, so how long has she been like that? You know, even if she was made up and you know, had all her stuff done, how long has she been sitting around? I mean, you'd think that normal walkerness you know, she would have been a little shabby, a little, a little decayed around the edges. <laughs> Cause I don't think anybody's really embalming people now, would yeah. they? Yeah. Or how long does that actually really last? You know? Yeah. I, uh, I really enjoy seeing Dwight and Al as a team. They, they had good interaction. You know, they worked well together and, as far as the you know combos, the pairings that I didn't really expect to see, having them two together, they had that whole you know good partner, uh, brother sister kind of vibe going, and I, I really enjoyed seeing them through the episode. Now, I know we've we're, we're going to dish on it later, but I I did like the idea of. Morgan making the combination act staff on the level of this is his new, his new personality. You know, he's merging the new ax wielding choppy Kelly Morgan with his old, you know, Zen Eastman staff Morgan. So maybe the new Morgan is a blending of some previous, you know, crazy killer Morgan and the new chilled Zen karma Morgan. I like the idea. We'll talk about it more later. I think it's kind of, like I said, it's a cool looking idea, but I think that we'll talk, we'll get into why it's a bad idea. later. (laughs) Uh, I don't know. The first thing that popped in my head when you're talking about that is like oh are we getting a Jekyll and Hyde kind of Morgan <laughs> so there's the Zen like to his okay well, he's like- already he's already <laughs> done he's already done the Jekyll Jekyll Hyde Jekyll Jekyllier yeah, he's already <laughs> he's already done that that's true it's just the combo act staff like I don't know yeah we'll see as long as he doesn't get a marker and start writing on his head <laughs> like exactly. <I> just, <laughs> Um, all right. Um, yeah, I just, I, like, I kind of agreed with you. It's like the embalmed walkers. Like that was really cool. Cause we've never really seen that before, whether or not it was like, that's realistic. Cause yeah, walkers will get up and move around and, you know, it's not like everybody around them died as soon as they finished embalming them. And then the, the you know, the, the ZA just happened and it just stopped. But yeah, the gag with the tooth falling out, <laughs> like, yep. I mean, this is the stuff that's like I I like to see in the show because it's kind of like okay, this many years that we've had these shows on, it's just fun to see new things, and this definitely was like a fun little you know they I want them to have fun with their types of walkers, um you know the bubonic plague walkers, and I think one of the things I liked is because it's making me really think 
about looking at the walkers more than just being like, oh, it's a walker. You know, it's just like, you know, we had this like, you know, last season with the irradiated walkers, you know, they're just like, they're like more melted or bubbly, you know, like whatever. Yep. But, you know, but like the rest of the walkers around them were all just your typical, what we know as walkers. But then you could see that one in the crowd that has like, oh, he's the one that's got the, you know, radiation. Yep. So, you know, it's, it, 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 it if they keep doing that stuff, you know, I don't care if it's, you know, silly or stupid. It's just, it's fun. You know, I'm like, at this point, we're not scared of walkers really, but it's like, hey, at least show us something new. So, right. And that's, that's something they sort of did with World Beyond when we had the, uh, yeah, the, you know, the Hornet Nest walker and we've seen mossy walkers and, yeah. And, you know, Nick Otero's done really well with the practical effects. So I re- I realize there's only so much, you know, in a way there's only so much you can do with practical effects for, you know, swampy walkers, wet walkers, dried yeah. up walkers. So it is cool that they can still, you know, still surprise us and come up with something different. different. Yeah. Nope. Totally agree. I want them to keep doing that. <laughs> so, uh, all right, Brian, what do you have? The only thing I had to say about my, awesome sauce here was uh, I'm surprised we haven't gotten, you know, some kind of plague or disease carried by rats before now. I I'm <laughs> there's a famous episode of little house in the prairie that I've probably seen 20 times where um, you know, the, the rats got into the grain and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the doctor discovers it's typhus. And uh, anyway, it's like a whole thing. And they had another uh, episode like that. There was some kind of like uh, some kind of disease, <laughs> but it reminded me of that. But, but if you think about it, something like, a, like bubonic plague or any kind of plagues, any kind of diseases like this would, sp- you know, sprout up again because they don't have the kind of, you know, modern ways of uh, treating them. And of course, you know, it would be, difficult to get antibiotics at even if you knew that it was the plague you know so yeah uh but it also reminded me of the whole thing you know at the prison with the outbreak there now it wasn't that wasn't rats that was like you know some kind of viral thing like a flu but still that was something that uh it reminded me of but this was this was different. This wasn't, you know, um, this wasn't spread from person to person, person like yeah. that was, you know? So, well, and, yeah. And it, and it was good to see that because it's kind of like, yeah, like the, in the prison and the walking dead, it was like, yeah, it was kind of like a flu or something, you know, that just like, yeah, the resources when the world is basically ended, it's like, you don't have access to the normal things that people would get inoculated for. So it would just be like, oh yeah, it's going to spread wild, wild, you know, wildfire but then it was interesting to see though like an actual okay yes rats are never going to go away so it's like they're gonna be a um, you know new nuisance and like you know they spread disease and stuff like that but when we don't have our normal protections and just doctor's visits and like whatever the you know it it was cool to see that like oh yeah Yeah. the plague (laughs) like the bubonic plague is it's still around even today but yeah Yeah. it's like you can just take an antibiotic and be like hey it's no big deal yeah and i'll complain about the rats later (laughs) (laughs) All right, well, let's go into our weak sauce. You're worthless and weak. All right, uh, our uh, first weak sauce comes from Renee from Atlanta, and she says, Morgan, don't start that I'm losing myself, blah, blah, blah shit. (laughs) (laughs) I need you to not go back and forth about Morgan Jones and instead be like your bestie Rick Grimes and not give a damn and rip out some Dang throats. <laughs> I love the new weapon, but dang, it's not going to be useful if you keep talking about your friends are not going to know who you are. Do the Rip Grimes what? <laughs> Crying face. <laughs> I, when he was saying that, I kept thinking of Sybil. <laughs> yep. Because <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. he, said, he said, you know, I, I've been like 16 different, you know, personalities or something like that. And I'm just thinking, okay. <laughs> Uh, too oh, uh, goodness. 
All right, next comes from Erin from the internet, and she goes, again, the addition of Morgan Jones content in this episode. Why, I ask, that is time we could have spent getting to know more about the great characters of the week or who the uh, message painters are. We are three episodes in. Can we please get a name for the message painters already? <laughs> uh, but they're, I, they're just the... The end is the beginning, guys. Yeah. I just called them the taggers. It's all like that they leave that. I, you know, I didn't really quite think to know like that tag that they put on there was going to be basically like, okay, this is their thing. So what does that connect with? And is it just them? Like, is it a group or whatever? But to see it again, I was kind of like, okay, well, that's them. The ending beginners. That's all you need to know. That's, yep. that's <laughs> yep. All right. Well, that was the all our listeners' week sauce. So uh, let's go on with ours, LT. Okay. Why did Al have to go fishing for a pencil if she's been keeping all these notes on things? Uh, maybe it's just me. But, you know, if she's a reporter and she's carrying a notepad, she needs to have a pencil. Mm-hmm. And just the whole <laughs> dramatic tension of having to, you know, fish around in the, uh, tool bins there in the uh in the uh the, the, the what the office or the embalming the, room or embalming room yeah. Like, yeah she's in an embalming room and she's having to look for a pencil so it, it was almost like she was um affected by the formaldehyde smell it's like she she kind of she kind of went a little okay off <laughs> yeah if that's your story brother you can stick to it's, it. <laughs> it's not it's not my story i said it's almost like you know, we were talking about the rats, and my argument is, what what are they eating in the building? That they've got a habitat, but they need food. Now, if right, right. are they eating the walkers? Yeah, I wondered about that. Well, we saw we saw some weird looking ones, didn't we? Yeah, but it's well, just from a professional standpoint. You know, they probably went to the pet store and got the rat wrangler <laughs> that, you know, your average, your average pet store rats are various colors and they can have fancy ears and normal ears. And why, yes, you might be asking yourself, we have had pet rats before, so I <laughs> might have some knowledge there, but fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. But like you said, I, I'm totally down with the idea of yes, in this collapsed society with all these empty buildings and all this rubbish that rats would be, you know, all over the place. But it just seems like that the rat concentration in this particular building and the places where they needed to be just seemed a little heavy. Yeah. 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 I just was wondering where it's like, okay, like they were up trying to get down to the fifth floor, you know, trying, but like having issues or whatever. But then by the time they got to the 32nd floor, it was like, there was tons of rats up there. Yeah. It, it almost got to that whole Indiana Jones <laughs> crawling through the cave level of ratitude. Yeah. <laughs> and they were just in the right place. At in the right, right place time. at the right time. <laughs> it was, it was, they, they had gotten off shift and all the rats were going to the house. Yep. <laughs> uh, I think my other week sauce this time is so I understand why they would want to have their helicopter landing point on top of a building. You know, there's no trees. There's probably no wires, things that helicopters don't like. But is it very prudent to leave your supply cache out in the open? It just seems like that it's it's a place that's accessible. You know, somebody can climb up and get to the top of the building and they let, left a lot of av gas and food and, you know, guns and beer and antibiotics and all these other things in a ex- basically an exposed area. And if we're talking about, you know, this super secretive, super sneaky, well supplied, it's a supply cache that's in the middle of nowhere that could have. I mean, what's going to happen if they fly in on their helo, land on the roof, and some other group of survivors has already come and stolen all their stuff? You know, if if it's supposed to be to refuel the helo so you can fly away and somebody's made off with your gas, it kind of puts you in a bad position. Yeah, so, no, 
doesn't make any sense unless they somehow knew those other people, but then they shot one of them and they were scared enough not to go up there when they kind of could, they, they had 13 hours that they weren't, you know, there wasn't like a, you know, helicopter there. So yeah, it makes absolutely yeah, no but, sense. But look at it from the standpoint of the guy that got shot was just more of the curiosity of, Hey, there's a guy landing a helicopter on the roof. And they don't know who these people are, so they're thinking, you know, hey, maybe it's somebody that's going to help. Um, well, no, I mean, th- yeah, you get that, but it, but they've been in this building since the start. And yeah, I think they would have known that, like, oh, these people are bad, but then what's up, you know, why it was the, ru- the roof, like, off limits? And, like, it would not take very long to just kind of, like crack the door open and be like, hey, there's no helicopter there. Oh, hey, you scout out. Oh, let's go rummage through this because we have 13 hours <laughs> between drops. <laughs> yeah. Know. So I, it's convenient. Yeah, it, it is convenient. <laughs> A little too convenient. Yes. So I agree with your weakness sauce on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then I'll just go into mine. And I just kind of had, and these are more just, I don't know, observations like i just yeah. morgan i just it's like he had a perfectly good axe staff and then he's cutting it in half to combine it with his old like bow staff and it's like i i get how like oh he's you know joining the new and the old you know and he loves his old bow staff he knows you know if there's a weight problem or like you know, whatever but the way he was putting it together and it's just like and then he like wraps you know it's like a pin but he, like system or whatever. And then he wraps like leather or something to, you know, around the joint. But I'm like, okay, unless you were like the best, like engineer, like a you know, builder or whatever, it's like, you just created a weak point in your stick that after so many swings or whatever, it's going to come loose and it's going, that's just, that's right there. It's, it's going to break off in some <laughs> easy way i don't know I, I if i'm wrong i thought that was completely ridiculous so why he tried to create this hybrid new weapon and just basically put a very well it's me weak it, spot in the whole right it's thing. a cool idea i kind of get why he did it but you are i was more concerned of the fact that the staff is what an inch in diameter maybe if that and an axe handle is much larger yeah, and the big so, heavy thing on the end of it because I actually so just the you know you're 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 down you're down with it. I mean it's it's gonna create that snappy point in the center, yep. <laughs> which is going to be lovely. I mean I get the sentimental reason you do it, but it just seemed like sort of a bad tactical move to <laughs> compromise your new cool weapon. Yep. That's, I just, I thought it was weak. I just, I was like, they wanted like, oh, this is, oh, he's upgrading to some new, his weapon that he made with his old staff to the new one. And I, I don't know. I thought it was just weak. Terrible. Yeah. Terrible. <laughs> uh, to, to me, to me, I'll just say, you know, you had a perfectly good weapon. Right. <laughs> and you blew it. You blew it. You blew it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness. Um, my next one is Dwight, um, after Al is going to leave everyone behind uh, to, to be with the beer girl. And then it's like everyone has a bubonic plague. And then she this this is the whole, like, we were just talk, uh, talking about this with the world beyond, which we recorded earlier. Um, like, she tells Dwight to hit every pharmacy you can. And then I'm like, okay, wait. At this point, like... You know, and after they've gone and scavenged a hundred some old places, finding just everybody dead, they didn't seem to be looking for supplies there, you know, on their own. But it was just like, okay, this is how many years already? And you think that there's like this like pharmacy that just everybody just left alone (laughs) and that you're going to somehow like, you know, you're just going to run around and then just find that one fully stocked pharmacy for these antibiotics, you know, antibiotics that like, it, <laughs> I don't know that like and no one just, on earth has already found yet. Like, yeah. And not just antibiotics, but specialized antibiotics. antibiotics yeah. S- yeah. Cipro. Cip- there's, yeah. Cipro. <laughs> there's going to be one 
unmolested Walgreens somewhere <laughs> out of the sticks. Yeah. Well, it's like, yeah, then where are they? How, like, it just, it's like, really? Like, and then you're all dying. Like, you, I don't know. It just, it was kind of like, I thought it was weak, but I just thought it was like, oh, you know, like here's he's Al's gonna go off to like find Beer Girl, you know, and then it's like they almost had like this weird music swell and like whatever. I don't know. It was just like, okay, that just didn't make any sense to me. <laughs> Maybe it's the pharmacy that sells the magic batteries. <laughs> yeah. Or the, yeah, never ending like walkie talkies that always work. Yep. Uh, and then my last was, uh, uh, Alan Dwight, when they first start up the stairs in the building and the walkers are like behind this furniture. Uh, and it was like, they walk up and like another plot device, obviously, but it's like, we've seen so far in the show, everybody really can seem to handle themselves about taking out walkers. You know, it's like, there's the whole like, Oh yeah, you just hit them on the head. You know, it's like, unlike you know. some other show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But it seems like everybody kind of has the skill set because you're in this apocalypse. But they go up the stairway and it's got furniture blocking like I could only count five walkers and they're in pretty easy reach of one of their weapons to just like knock right. them out. Right. But instead they're like, oh, you know, whatever. Like, we, let's, we can't go that far up there we just have to go through this door and then the walkers are like basically going past the furniture one at a time <laughs> i i don't know i just like i i get the whole like th this was just it happened that reason because the plot said we need you to get onto this you know off the stairs and into this floor to go do more stuff or whatever and or that's where they meet uh you know the people of the building nora and all that but still i'm like come on I the, just the walkers had their Ikea armor. Oh, <laughs> uh, they're uh, it's just it's like come on. I don't know. Frustrates me. <laughs> I have nothing to complain about. Not uh, like that. Not not all, I, I leave all my complaints focused on a new show. <laughs> <laughs> which which listeners if you if you bother to uh keep listening uh, you will hear me complain about that. So, <laughs> all right. Well, that was all I had. You got anything, Brian? Uh, Sherry, or should I say, oh, Sherry, <laughs> <laughs> why are you walking to Dwight like a walker? I didn't understand that. <laughs> okay. So the, the other thing, and this kind of thing drives me nuts. It's just a little thing, but it's it's a thing. Al picks out the beer and the antibiotics, believes some other stuff, which I guess is fine, you know, no big deal. But then she leaves the box open and heads downstairs without putting the lid back on. <laughs> and, you know, if she's doing this for, you know, like knowing that, um, what's her name, Isabel, is, you know, that, she in code, you know, got to got to speak to Isabel and, you know, great. That was great. Um, why would she not put the lid back on? And, and this is the kind of thing we've seen over and over again, but it's like, it just, oh, it just drove me nuts. Why did she do that? And I watched it like more than once just to confirm. And she didn't put the lid back on. <laughs> She was too excited about running down to save everybody. But yeah, it's like to find her case of antibiotics. And uh, actually I had a uh, what sauce, but I'm going to give it in my weak sauce. Um, Cause I think looking at it now, I think it, it could be a weak weak sauce too. So originally I had this, in my what sauce, but I'm going to put this in my weak sauce. Cause I think it could very well apply as weak sauce. Why is Ginny sending them out there to find out why people died? I mean, aren't most people going to be dead by either a walker bite or some other thing that usually <laughs> kills people in an apocalypse? Like, you know, conditions that are easily, easily treatable, like, I don't know, the plague, um, you know, <laughs> like, you know, with antibiotics, uh, I don't know, old age, you know, heart attack, um, diabetes, you know, whatever, what have you. It, it just seems a little implausible. I, I mean, 
so she's scouting out, like, I could see if these were people that they knew were alive and had suddenly become dead. And she was going back to, you know, research why they had died. Like, but that's not what I'm hearing. I'm hearing yeah. it, it's just like, you know, oh, let's go survey and and find out why these people died. Well, they died because there's a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like it doesn't seem like there's really that many ways that yeah. You and, and, it, it up. and so so they you know, they died either because it was a zombie apocalypse or they died because it was an apocalypse. Right. And just the kind of things that kill you in an apocalypse, like, oh, I don't know, not having clean water, not having food, you know, having medical conditions that can't be treated, <laughs> you know, so those kind of things, those kind of things. And then, of course, in, in the in the zombie apocalypse, somebody dies like that. You know, the, the other people aren't prepared for it or, you know, they kill them in the wrong way or, you know, somebody's died and they don't take care of it like they should and voila it spreads so i don't know i just that to me seems so stupid that i couldn't i couldn't get past that it 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 was kind of a downer uh on my rating i just the the reason for for being there just didn't work for me yeah right yeah Uh, well and i I kind of, I mean, it popped in my mind that it was like, well, maybe that was just like Ginny was doing that just to kind of send them on a wild goose chase because she wanted them busy doing something else. But then it would seem like, well, then wouldn't they have had one of Ginny's person, you know? I mean, you know, I don't know, like. They're they're recording all this stuff, and of course, this is me trying to like put wrap my head around like why would they do this? Because it does seem like fruitless. Where it's like, well, how does this help you? And then what if they do run into people that are surviving like they did? It's like, yeah, they they already told them it's like, oh no, no no no, you don't want to go to our place, but we'll find you a place, <laughs> you know. So it's like they're yeah. not they're not. And Jenny doesn't want new people. It really seems right. Like, and go go a level further. You've taken two people from Morgan's group. And you've given them a truck and you've given them supplies and you're saying, go out there and find things. What's to stop them from keeping going? Exactly. You know, do yeah. they have to check in with the Rangers? I mean, is there some, you know, are they wearing their probation anklets and the, they, they'll know if they go out of the area? Right. It seems like if you've got two people that you're wondering where they're going to be, then, you know, Dwight's plan yeah, you know, irrespective of that, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. You know, drive it till you run out of gas. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, next is our what sauce. What, what, what? And our first lender, our listener is Aaron from the internet. You want to take this LT? All right. Aaron says, does the black helicopter group just hate beer? <laughs> I asked him because. How are they okay with Isabel just leaving booze around and hopes Al is the one who finds it? Is she the one packing the crates with supplies? Because again, why else would it be there? <laughs> well, maybe they don't hate beer. Maybe they love beer. That's why it's in all their supply caches. Well, and it is kind of like where they land to refuel. So I guess why they're refueling. I don't know how long that takes. <laughs> it's like, hey, have a beer. <laughs> Well, it takes a while if you're doing it from jerry cans, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> okay, speaking of the crates, wouldn't Isabel know the building is burned, as she says at the end, or that the people were at least infected, because why else would they exact would the exact drug they need be in the supply crate? You have flares and a supply crate just sitting up there, which says someone knows more than they're saying. I feel it would have been interesting interesting if al learned it was the black helicopter group who let the mice go in the building as a test that really would have put her list for isabel to the test well um what was the name of the antibiotic uh cipro or cipro Cipro. Uh, just editorially speaking about cipro it's used for a lot of infectious diseases and chemical warfare type things so that's probably why it was there not just because of the plague, just a, a good, I, like across the board kind of like, you know, yeah. 
So it's just like a happy coincidence. But I digress. <laughs> she says, why would you leave valuable supplies on the roof like that? Sounds familiar. <laughs> that part just didn't make any sense. It seems like they could have could have had another reason for why Al called her off after getting to the roof or maybe never have her go to the roof at all because she changed her mind. Yes, the, the flair for Dwight Sherry, but still it was kind of weak and felt convenient that stuff would still be up there. Side note, as an Alicia Al shipper and Al fan, I'm not sad one bit Al didn't get on the chopper. Get to the chopper! <laughs> <laughs> get to the chopper get to the chopper <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah yeah i, I it, it, there's a lot of just convenient stuff that was just let's push them this way you know like this is to get the plot going or whatever i think yep. the overall part though that i think that helped it all was because it was or just the whole seeing uh dwight and al's like budding fresh friendship we've never seen al really be that close of friends with anybody in the group maybe june but like even still she was very you know you know would hold back yeah so it was it was fun because we don't know how long it's been we don't know if they've been around each other or were they split up at times you know we just don't know that but you know it's like to see al actually having this really kind of a personal connection with someone and then also dwight the same it just made the yeah. episode amazing <laughs> so, so yeah all the plot stuff yeah it's like that was kind of silly but you know at least it paid off <laughs> well and and the last thing about the supply dump again is when she found the helicopter when they were still out in the sticks it's one thing to have your supply cache out in the middle of nowhere you know because Art. what's the likelihood of somebody finding something way way out in the middle yeah. of the woods this is a little bit different in the middle of town. So, yeah. Now, uh, again, we don't know like how far they spread off because, like, because like, what was the other part? Like, that was uh, that was Delta. No, oh no, that that was drop safe Baker. But yep. then after she's like, oh, Baker's been burned. She's like, I'm going to Delta, and you know, it's like, okay, where's that? Is that another building? <laughs> you know, or is that in another town? You know, away so. Yeah. It, Somewhere else. Yep. We'll find out, maybe. I don't know. And our next Watt sauce comes from Renee from Atlanta, and she says, who in their right state of mind would crawl through a bunch of rats? Hell to the naw. <laughs> would have died on the freaking spot. And let's not um, and turn to a zombie. Not to mention um, they had the bubonic plague. <laughs> yep. Yep. It made for a good scene, but then I kind of thought the same too, Renee. I was just kind of like, okay, you guys have knives. I'd be like just stabbing them. <laughs> like I wouldn't let the rats be coming near me. I'd just be like just stabbing them and killing them as I push through. <laughs> oh, All right. Thank you, everyone, for your what sauce. Now is on to ours. Uh, and what did you have for your what sauce, LT? What sauce is my greatest fear in life is being trapped long term in an office full of telemarketers. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. I kind of had. I know you're going to go into it, but just the thought of, <laughs> you know, say, Kyle, have you ever considered about the extended warranty on your vehicle? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I haven't. I, can I just hang up? <laughs> you know, um, you know, you know that for, for a small monthly fee, we can set you up with a timeshare and. <laughs> Cozumel. <laughs> or I thought they said Peoria. And I'm like, wait, Peoria, Illinois? I don't know. Because <laughs> I'm like, that's not really. I, 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 th th I think she meant she was in Peoria. Okay. I just, I remember hearing that, but. <laughs> and you're going, wow. Yeah. I was like, I want a vacation in Peoria. Yeah. I'm like, that's yeah. only like an hour south of me. <laughs> that's what I say. And no, we, we don't mean any, any hard feelings or any disrespect or any Peorians in the audience. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> Oh, um, yeah, I, I guess I'll go into my what sauce and it's Nora and her office people. And like, as I, you know, once we got to the part where she talks about, like kind of opens up a little bit more, but then, you know, it's, I guess Al or they were talking, it's like, they've been there from the start in this office building. Mm -hmm. And then I was kind of like, but what year is it? She didn't mention that when, when they were up with the bubonic play walkers and she's like 
or Al asked her something and she's like, oh yeah, I know them. It's like, oh, 2008 office party. And I'm like, okay, so 2008. And then, you know, I know we have had this kind of a pretty big time jump on this show. Um, not as far as the main show, but I know right. we've had a time jump. And, you know, I know that like, we know that the start of this happened in like 2010. So I'm kind of like, how long have they been here? And, you know, has it been years? Have they been like trapped this whole time trying to make their way down? Like all, I don't know. I, it made no sense. Cause it was like, you know, people were leaving, but they were, you know, they were staying. So it's like, at some point there wasn't a plate, like they couldn't get like, they were stopped at like, you know, floor five or something. I think it was, you know, they, they said, Oh, we got to floor five and then we had to stop. So I don't know. I, I it just big question mark because I'm like, you know, it's like, that seems like a very long time when you need shelter. I mean, they, okay, you have shelter, but you need food, you need water. You know, it's like, unless they're the only ones left in this town. And so they have people scavenging, but we don't know that. And it just seemed very interesting that they would just held up in an office building. In an know. office building. Right. That has zero, like, you know, there's no garden on the roof. You know, it's like, where are they getting their water? You know, it's like, you, there's not very many, you know, I don't know. So I could go well, on. And we, we know the phones aren't working, so they can't still be making calls. <laughs> and the elevators don't work, and so they're not getting any kind of power. So are they just sitting doubt, in the dark? I doubt their manager's still there trying to keep them on the <laughs> clock. Uh, so it, it's it's like you said, why are you still in the office? Yeah. Of all the places you're going to hole up, you're going to hole up in a call center. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't lend itself to having a lot of resources that would help you survive. <laughs> it is true. You know, vending machines only have so much vending machine food in them <laughs> for not even like two months. <laughs> well, yeah, and I'd, I'd hate to think about the nutritional ramifications of eating, you know, uh, Cheetos and sunflower seeds for an extended <laughs> period of time. Yep. Oh, goodness. Oh, all right. Well, yeah, that pretty much was it for my what sauce. Um, all right. Well, then next is on our sad and awe sauce. Aww. All right. Our first sad awe sauce comes from, or I guess our only sad awe sauce comes from Aaron from the internet. And she says, Dwight being a super romantic <laughs> smiley face. Also him finding Sherry. I hope she's not a dud transfer from the main show like Morgan has been because I don't want to waste time with two misses. Yes, Dwight worked out, but it's still one to one for me because again, I can't stand Morgan Jones on this series. So I hope Sherry is more Dwight in blending uh, than Morgan in feeling like she's pushed in everywhere just because. Does Sherry have any special skills out of curiosity? That's a good question because I think it's there's. True. I think there's also maybe a possible connection to Jenny, but I mean, I guess we'll see. Uh, and then what are some things fear only watchers may be excited to see with her? Is that the same actress from the main show? Also out of curiosity. Yes, Aaron, that is the same actress that played Sherry. Um, I should have already had this name in there, but, <laughs> uh, so I don't know, like, I, I it's exciting because of the fact that Dwight's on the show. So obviously I think it was a, just a natural, you know, that we would see Sherry and Dwight, you know, since, you, since you know. part of Dwight's hook was he was looking for Sherry. Right. And the whole main show and all the, you know, crap that he had to go through that it was just the next obvious choice. Yep. All right. Uh, well, that was it. Thank you, Aaron. Um, and now to our own on um, Saturn Asas, which I didn't really have any, but you did, LT. Yes, I did. Uh, you know, kudos to the actor, but when Al was listening to the helicopter fly away into the distance, she had, she sold it. To me, she had the look on her face thinking, you know, I'm never going to see her again. And, you know, it just, it, uh, I thought it was a good moment. It touched me. Aw. Aw. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and, of course, my other one is the last scene with the big spin-around shot when, you know, 
Dwight did his run down the street and, you know, and hugged up on Sherry and they did the long protracted hug and kiss and spin after they talked about, you know, so what are you going to do if you see her Dwight? Yeah. So that, that paid off and being, being a perpetual cynic, they may kill her next episode, (laughs) but we did get our touching heartfelt reunion. Dwight finally found her. So, yeah, but I feel like that's going to, ch- I mean, unless there's some connection with Jenny or the group, uh, that's going to change Dwight's, you know, d- he already said that is like, uh, he was going to find a walker that looked similar to him to, you know, basically play himself off as dead. So that, you know, if you unless, Jerry, unless Jenny has a, a forensic surgeon in a DNA lab, right. <laughs> Which we don't know, I guess <laughs> you don't know, but mm-hmm. maybe, Maybe he can pull it off, and we'll just have to see what happens. Yep. All righty. All right. Well, let's go into our feedback now. We can talk about it. We're done talking. Time to listen. All right. We've got feedback from Dieta, and it comes in a voicemail. Hi, guys. This is Dieta from Detroit. I missed the deadline and so I know I didn't have time to type and I know you might not get this in time but I just wanted to give my a little quick feedback from the episode um, this past week. Um, I write this episode 8 out of 10. I give it an 8 out of 10. Dwayne and Sherry back together again. <laughs> um, so I think I really enjoyed I actually enjoyed this episode more than the episode with Alicia Strand. I don't know. I just Alicia Strand, I'm just kind of so over all of them, or at least Strand. And Alicia, they don't give her a lot of lines or enough to do to me. It seems like the focus is on the other characters more so, so I don't get to really get a good feel on Alicia. It seems like just when you start to get like, okay, Alicia, yeah, and then they pull her back and you don't really see her for a couple episodes. But anyway, um, Morgan. Uh, of course, well, I know, um, I can't remember her name, but she doesn't like Morgan. <laughs> but if she's had seen The Walking Dead, I know we discussed this before. Um, uh, Morgan is actually a good character. I, and like, I'm looking forward to see him evolve into becoming, um, like I said, in my mind, the Rick Grimes of Fair The Walking Dead. Unfortunately, they did get rid of the original characters, you know, uh, Kim Dickens and, um, the other guy. And then, of course, Nick left. Um, the show, uh, I do feel like they should have left Kim on. I, maybe they'll bring her back <laughs> and Alicia and her can get reunited. And I think she needs to be back on the Fear the Walker Dead because it was started with them and it should at least have two of the, two of the main characters from when the show first came out. Uh, but anyway, back to the episode. So let's see. Awesome Sauce was, what did, did anything awesome happen this episode? Um, well, I say all sauce was sharing the way and getting reunited finally. Um, I was kind of over the storyline with, um, Al and her helicopter girl. <laughs> um, cause I knew she wasn't going anywhere. It was just like she making all this big stink of trying to find and listen to the walkie talkies. And then again, I heard a question about the walkie talkies. So how do they know what channels they're talking on? It's just like, seem like everybody, if they have to report in, as far as to the uh, Virginia, I guess they switched cha- channels to talk to them. But how do they know Virginia not listen to other channels? I'm just curious how Al was able to find the channel that the helicopter girl was on and nobody else. <laughs> so I guess that's like weak sauce to me. Um, the bubonic plague with the rats, uh, disgusting. Um, but I see... I saw, you know, we saw Al discover something saying like the rats were on purpose or something. And I'm trying to figure out how do you have rats on purpose? Like, what, did they have a bunch of rats or something? And they, with the plague and the people who were spray painting the submarine, released them into the building because they knew people were in the building. I don't know. It's just, I'm just waiting for the, I guess, the cars to fall in order or whatever. Um, who else I want to talk about? Um good to see um uh Dwayne. Is it Dwayne? Yeah, Dwayne, yeah. It's good to see him. Who else was in this episode? It was mostly Al, some new people. We love new people. <laughs> About beyond the, the watching the 
world beyond. Just had a quick comment about that. Just basically, um, I know the show is mm, so far, so far. I feel like it's in. It's okay. Some, you know, it's, it's something to watch. And basically, I just feel like I'm watching it because I'm trying to get answers. I need answers as to where Rick went to. And hopefully this this show will give us. And then I'm trying to see how is it going to tie into all of the other shows. So that's mainly my reason for focusing. I mean, for watching it, it's just to be able to see if it's going to tie into the other shows and give us answers. And so, yeah, the episode for Fear the Walking Dead was pretty okay. So, yeah, I guess we're going to get segmented episodes because it looks like next week is going to be John Dory's episode. Um, so I'm okay with that. And just trying to see what this season going to do. Um, oh, <laughs> I would have loved to have the duty um, that uh, Al and Dwayne had as far as being out in the wherever the they were clearing places or or whatever they were doing. I really didn't understand what they were doing, as opposed to being on boo boo duty like <laughs> Alicia and Strand. So that was a plus. But anyway, I love you guys. Um, I had fun when I did sit in. Um. Miss you, Cal, because <laughs> it was fun. We had fun that night. And LT, you feeling in real good. So continue the podcast, guys. Thanks. Bye. Uh, thank you, Deanna. Oh, so good to hear from you. And uh, made some really good points. But definitely a uh, showcase winner this time. And keep it up. Love you, too. And miss you, too. Yay. Uh, no, I definitely have to, you know, uh, you made some very, very good points, Yetta. Um, it's, I can see like, uh, you're definitely, you know, uh, Renee doesn't like <laughs> Morgan, but it's really nice to hear that you, you know, d- do, um, like him on the show, but I kind of have to kind of agree with you. It's like, I'm not, I think we're all still upset about Kim Dickens and just the whole, how they played her off and stuff. And it just seemed you know, I don't know. I like it. she definitely. Sh- there could have been so much more if they just kept her on, um, and then I don't think we necessarily would have the need for Morgan to come over. But I am also am like enjoying seeing Morgan kind of making you know kind of evolve outside of what you know his character was like during you know on the main show. So I you know I'm like I don't dislike him on the show as much as some, you know, of you might, or if, you know, he can get a little annoying here or there, but you know, it's like, it is fun to see him. To- yeah. And I like Morgan. Uh, I think his, you know, his arc on the main show was interesting. I think he's, you know, it was good to see him on fear. Uh, I don't necessarily share all the same opinions about the original fear cast that everyone else does. And that's fine. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, you know, I'm not saying they could have done something Mm -hmm. different with Madison if she'd have stayed, but I don't know how she would have dovetailed into the story arc as we've seen it progress from when, you know, they picked up or yeah, I mean, I don't, I, like I said, I, I don't know how how she would have done in some of the things that we saw when they had that first, you know, when the, uh, when the SWAT bus first showed up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, currently as where the show is now, I don't know where Madison would fit into it. It it seemed like they would, it would have been, it would have gone a different way. I don't think last season would have ever happened like that. Yeah. They would have had to have done something different. Yeah. It would have definitely like, so, since that's not the case, you know, it's like, I mean, so far what we're seeing in this season, the the start of it, it's like, you know, we that we still get little hints of like the Madison influence, especially with Alicia, right? But you know, it's not like this, like it's not trying to drive that point, and so I kind of maybe think that it's nice that we are still getting some of these little callbacks of just like, you know, what we kind of remember back in the stadium, and you know, just. You know, just missing Matt, you know, Kim Dickens. Right. So, and, it, and two, we have to look at it that they were trying to figure out what worked. And as much as we struggled with some of the storyline, mm. they've sort of gotten their feet under them now. Uh, 
whatever whatever issues we had with the when you were talking we we're, we're going to be talking about troy i sorry i was going to refer to him as spoon eye guy again <laughs> but um when we saw what happened at, at the ranch and then what happened at the stadium and then we've seen the progression past that you know once they got on the road and um, how Morgan has come into the group and how the group dynamic changed and how they, you know, split apart and came back together. Um, we just kind of have to go with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, we've seen that in many different time kind of shows where it's like, you know, the, you know, the showrunner changes, something changes. It kind of like hobbles around, you know, in right. the storyline. But yeah. I think. And as much as we, as much as, you know, some of the fans would want it, would have wanted her to stay um what would they have done story-wise had she stayed you know had they run had they sort of run out of road once they got to the end of the stadium arc yeah so uh, it's, a, you know, it's it's it's, good, it's i mean she it's, can only it's, be like the helicopter mom for so long because we saw that for the for right. three right, seasons. Right. <laughs> so, you know, she would have had it grown in some way too. So, and maybe by, you know, the way they went and now we're seeing, you know, kind of how the season's starting to progress and like it's a whole, you know, new, new baddie that's like, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I, so much could have been done and it, it wasn't that way. They made these decisions. And so we kind of have to just go with it, but at least they're kind of coming around and I yeah. can't, can't be, you know, negative on any of that so far. <clears throat> all right. Well, thank you to Ada so much for your voicemail. Um, and then, all right. So our next listener's voice or uh, feedback comes from Glennis from Toronto. And she says, Morgan getting back to more himself with upgrading that axe to a bow axe lethal combo mix to match his newly merged persona and outlook. Watch out, Virginia. Uh, the callback to Aaron's finding the, the Alaska number plate at the Wolves Walkers truck stop in the um, Walking Dead Season 5, Episode 16, Conquer. And with Al and Dwight in Fear the Walking Dead collecting driver license instead of the number plates are scarce now. And finding the Alaska driver's license of Mark Smith, which this rare find ends up being given to Nora to remember her friend by. Al sure had a stash of driver's license showing they've come across a lot of dead and not much of the still living. Uh, that's true. Uh, so those spray painting, um, the spray painters with the end is the beginning are part of CRM then question mark. I don't think so, but no. yeah. And also responsible maybe for spreading the bubonic plague and ending everyone in order to start afresh as in is this the or is the beginning? Uh, in Walking Dead World Beyond, the CRM were using spray paint to track the walkers and don't hesitate to kill what is perceived to be a threat and seem to now have walker bites um, their test subjects, which are then deemed A. So happy Rick Grimes was then termed to be a B to avoid the A's fate. But wonder what all the B designation has to do. Um, I know you wanted us to keep Fear the Walking Dead and the Walking Dead world beyond separate, but I think in this case it's heading towards it all being linked up to a point. With Isabel a CRM lurking in Fear the Walking Dead, I suppose it's all be kept for the Walking Dead movies to have all three uh, shows merging into one, which is still two plus years away. That's been the question I think all of us kind of can agree with is like, yep, they're pushing all this towards the movies and whether or not it means, you know, we end up getting just one show that combines everybody. Yep. And I, I suspect that Isabel may be the Colonel's daughter. Yeah. I, th I thought that was kind of would make sense because she was far away as her daughter and, you know, everybody online seemed to be like pushing. It just that. seems to be like a convenient, obvious plot point. Yeah. And the things that we've seen so far in these shows, when it's obvious, it's probably obvious. Yep. <laughs> this is not like they're not trying to play six dimensional chess. It's this is pretty it's obvious. It's pretty obvious. <laughs> 
All right. She continues. I like the related um, results created by the decisions made by Al and Dwight to pursue and try to meet up with Isabel to even get to that building in the first place. And then Al deciding to wave off Isabel to protect her and care for sick Dwight. And then finding the beer on Isabel's instructions, which then led to the uh, Cipro uh, discovery, which treated everyone, including Dwight. And by firing the flare that brought Sherry to the vicinity, which concluded with the touching reunion with Dwight. That's pretty much <laughs> the whole plot of this episode. Uh, Dwight, as he said to Al that he wouldn't find the words uh, to say to Sherry. So the hug and long kiss was all that was needed. I hope this feel good situation doesn't foreshadow Di- Dwight's death as he cheated death once by being able to take those drugs. And just now finding Sherry again, keep looking over your shoulder as no one can be happy long in this walking dead universe. So very true. Yep. <laughs> all right. Okay. We got some feedback from Renee from Atlanta. Overall, it was kind of slow. I will be glad when we start getting to the nitty gritty and take Jenny and her crew out so we can start tying the shows together. I'm ready to see my boo, Rick Grimes. Miss him so, so, so much. (laughs) Don't we all? Yep. (laughs) All right. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, everyone. Um, That was all of our listeners' uh, feedback. All right, well, let's go into our um, feedback. Um, LT, I didn't see that you had really had much or anything. I think I've really said about all I had to say about it through the through the sauce <laughs> section. <laughs> oh, oh uh, cool. Yeah, I just, um, I, I kind of, yeah, it was a lot of stuff was already covered, you know, and, and it was so. This is kind of some of my nitpicking points. And I really did like enjoy this episode. So I can't say I'm like, I didn't. Um, Cause I, I enjoyed, you know, Dwight um, and Al getting closer together, you know, just the nice bond, you know, Dwight saying that he would like cover for her, you know, if he found, you know, f- would find a Walker that match, you know, could pass off as her being dead. Um, that was just fun to see. Uh, and, um, and even letting her go while he was sick, you know, it's like, Cause I don't know. I, I, it, it kind of was, it just, you know, it's like he, I guess was like, you know, they're in that little understanding, I guess, or have that, have that connection where they both are searching for their love, you know, and he's looking for Sherry. She, you know, she's looking for Abigail, but even to let her go, you know, while he's basically has the plague and is going to, again, try to find, you know, like, every pharmacy that hasn't been picked over. Um, But, you know, it's just like, I just felt like it was like, I, it was like, cause he wanted her. And I put this like in the Morgan voice, just live. (laughs) So, I mean, it was just, uh, you know, like, I don't know. It was cute. Or maybe I should have made this in my sauce just see like, you know, that he was willing to sacrifice for her so that she Mm -hmm. could, you know, basically, get away, you know, kind of go her own way, find what she wants. Um, that was more important to her. So that, that was cool. Um, I like, we've talked about this. I know some of the other, you know, listeners did. It was just like, why was Jenny like having them look like, you know, their, their mission was basically to go find all these like settlements and then find out why. And they were all dead, which I'm assuming they already knew all that. And they were just trying to find out, you know, what's, you know, why that was like, what killed them. And it, we talked about this. I know Brian mentioned something. It's just like, it can't, it, it made no sense. It was just like, was this just really just kind of like, uh, we need something for them to do and, you know, to kind of make the story go on or was there actually a point to it? Cause yeah, maybe it was just a loyalty test. To see if they would run away or to see if they would come back. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, I mean, that's, we, again, we never really got any of that kind of information because we never saw them talk to Jenny and saying, Oh, here's your mission. Go out there. You know, kind of the same last episode was strand and Alicia. It's like, it kind of seemed like apocalypse busy work. (laughs) It's like, here's your mission. Go to these, you know, spend four days and, record all this and I want tapes and then, okay. <laughs> that could be. Um, 
Uh, Sherry being back is nice, but I agree with Glennis. Either it's not good news for Dwight or it's not good news for Sherry. Because in this world, like having a medical degree, <laughs> someone is not going to survive much longer. Well, I, I don't know if I agree with that. Um, because, I mean, we've got June and John Dory. I mean, they're together. And, uh, you know, I, from what I can see, I believe she's joining the cast like as a full-time regular so you know hopefully that means she's gonna last a little while so i don't know Mm. i think i I, I think there's i put it this way i think that there is some definite possibility there you know whether or not she is on the show long term i don't know but there's definitely some territory that um gives a dynamic to Dwight and to Sherry that is something. I mean, you think about it, like he crossed half the world, half the, oh, half the world, half, <laughs> half the U.S. to get to her and somehow found her. I mean, there's a story there um, that I'm hoping that they're going to get into, and I think they will. So, so yeah. Uh, and, but in general, because I didn't say this before, I, I – Love the fact that, other than the fact that Sherry was walking like a walker <laughs> when she showed up, um, that I I I love the fact that um, they're back together. And you know, I got I got a little misty. Um, I cried a little bit when um, she showed up. So I admit it. Of course, you know, the cynical uh, type of people would say that I cried when Star Trek, you know, Star Trek Discovery used the right font on Star Trek last week. Maybe. Well, you know, so that's that's all that, you know, I can say about that. Um, as far as my comments, the scene where they broke open the wall reminded me a little bit of that scene from, I think it's called The Eye of the Beholder. Season three, episode one. That was, of course, the episode where uh, Madison poked, uh, what's his name? I um, can't think of his name. St- J- uh, not Jake. Jake. Jake's the other one. Um, what's the name of the bad guy, Kyle? The other auto brother. Yeah, the other auto bro- brother. Where she jammed him in the eye with a spoon. With a spoon, yeah. I'm, like, blanking out right now. It was... It was like literally there, and just as I went to say it, it popped out of my head. Um, Troy, 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 Troy. Troy. When she she popped the the eye out of uh, of Troy, it, that was the the episode. But uh, anyway, you had that like gruesome scene where the walkers like picked up on the guy from the walls, and uh, that was you know crazy. So. Uh, it just reminded me of that. <laughs> yeah, I like I saw your comment there, and you're like you were saying you're like that one guy, and it's kind of like I couldn't remember his name, and I looked it up, but yeah, it's like if uh, it, he's Noel Fisher on Shameless is like the you know who he's yeah. known for, but yeah, but that scene, just him getting ripped in half. I mean, it was pretty gruesome, but it was cool. <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't even thinking of him. I was thinking uh, I I didn't care about his character's name, but I was trying to remember. Troy's name, but uh, guy that and, got sucked into the wall. Daniel yeah. Sharman, who I know, I know a lot of a lot of ladies liked Troy, that bad boy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, that that particular one was uh, memorable. But it it just reminded me of that. But it, then it kind of went a different way with the rats and you know, hmm. so. All right. Uh, all right. Well, let's get into uh, the spinoff, uh, the world beyond, the Walking Dead world beyond, uh, season one, episode four, the wrong end of the telescope or a telescope, written by uh, Sinead Daly, is the producer. That's probably Sinead. Oh, Sinead Daly. Hi, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's- we're recording these completely out of sorts uh, this week. So, Sinead. Yeah, Sinead. Uh, well, written by her and directed by Rachel uh, Litterman. 
Uh, description is the group seeks shelter from a storm inside an abandoned high school while res- resupplying. They imagine what high school life was once like and encounter new threats, both living and dead. All right. Uh, well, let's go into our feedback. LT, do you have anything about the wrong end of a telescope? Well, I do. Uh, the first thing that I really wanted to say something about is They were inside the building. We saw the outside that was covered with all sorts of vines and ivies. And and when we went inside, inside the dark building, there were green leaves and vines. Yeah, I noticed that too. And I was going, there's no holes in the roof that we saw. So why are there green leaves inside of a dark building? I think there were holes and like there were some windows that were, um, you know, broken. So maybe they were, you know, yeah, quite... but this was, this was in the hallway. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not to, not to go back to the log, but it's like the set dressers just got some vines and taped them to the wall to make it look grown over. There was just, there was just greenery where there should not be greenery. Yeah. Uh, Iris and the annual. Now, once they escaped the rainstorm and they got in the building and she found a copy of the annual in the auditorium, it seemed that that was one of our flashback engines for this episode. And I understand that she's grown up, you know, post-apocalypse in this little community of hers, but she just does a lot of flashbacky material off of that annual. And it just, when you have an episode that's so full of flashbacks it's just this segue of her imagining how high school was flipping through this annual and i keep thinking i don't know if i want any of my annuals to survive the apocalypse or not but (laughs) i think there would be a a marked time difference there and while we're on the subject of flashbacks there were a lot of heartfelt conversations between sets of people this time yes uh you know very noticeable too the the whole iris and uh silas thing i know we're going to get to the big one with them but uh, you know uh hope and huck having various conversations and the flashbacks with hope and her dad and then I keep, sorry, I keep forgetting his name. He, he's, Felix, Felix and um, Elton. Yeah, Elton. Because I keep, all my notes are corduroy suit boy. So, <laughs> but, you know, they had their little conversation. And we get, at least we did get some of the motivation behind Felix. That, you know, he's got a bad case of survivor guilt. And it looks like that that's his primary motivation for trying to keep everybody alive. Yeah. Um, we saw this episode that teenagers can't follow instructions. <laughs> of course. That when they that talk- sounds like the entire series. <laughs> yeah. But uh Silas and Iris stay in the auditorium and we'll come get you. And so what do they do? They left. Uh, it just seems like that's like you said, that seems to be one of the underlying currents of the whole thing. Um I wanna say the supply cache that they found in the fallout shelter just from my personal editorial content the fact that now they're going to be eating uh 10 year old baked beans and sardines i don't know if i want to be searching any buildings with them um you know i heard a bunch of people talk about you know what's the shelf life of a can of beans and you know the usda says five years for most canned goods and now having having eaten a 30 year old uh, sea rat in younger <laughs> days from vietnam i realize as long as the can's not rusted it should be okay to eat but it won't necessarily be tasty right there is a guy who specializes in this um on youtube he's uh mre steve that's right <laughs> God yes. almighty, I, my, my wife loves him. 
and and every time uh, he gets a, a new video, we we watch it almost immediately as soon as we know that there's one, a new one out. Uh, and he want, and he's had like you know 1860 rations from like you know the, the beginning war- of the Civil War and and stuff like that. Well, the World crazy War stuff. One, the canned World War One emergency ration was my favorite. <laughs> Because he's going, you know, this was packaged in 1918 and he eats it. And it's kind of like, and he, and, you know, you'll see that his hand disappear up the camera and you'll hear him chewing and he'll go, Hmm. Mm. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I can highly recommend Steve 1989, uh, because he, he, it's, it's, uh, you have to see it. You have you just, to see you it. have, you have to see it because he gets so giddy. In, in excitement when he's opening up these MRE uh, packages, let's get it out on a tray. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I have to look this up. I yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. You do. Uh, you do. Definitely do. There's a couple of them that he's done that uh, the cans, the cans are rusted and the stuff's leaked out into the package. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, that's, that's kind of where we're going with the uh with the food and the fallout shelter yep Uh, well and and the the thing i had it in my notes but i'll bring it up now because it's related it's like okay 10 year old ginger ale is not gonna taste good i'm sorry (laughs) it's not (laughs) it's it's not it's just not i couldn't read the can i was assuming that it was like you know two cans of off-brand light beer well it was it was a fake uh ginger ale brand you know so that's but i I specifically saw ginger ale Um, but either either way 10 year old 10 year old soda yeah (laughs) probably not gonna be really good definitely not um when silas finally snapped and he did that big bare fist beat down of the walker the the part that, that I thought of was okay. So now he's going to cut his knuckles up. Yeah. And his hands are going to get infected. Yeah. Because I mean, how many times have we worried about uh, people on the prime show getting cuts on their hands or getting cuts and getting infections? Yeah. It, it's it, that happened basically in the very beginning, early beginning where they started talking about like, Oh, getting a scrape or like this and that. But I think they kind of just pushed over that. It's like, okay, you know, it's like people are getting blood all over their face, you know, from killing walkers and there's no way it couldn't get in, you know, in their mouth or something like that. And how many times, how many times did Rick split his hand open? Yeah. So I think it kind of left it where it was just like, okay, maybe that's a could be a thing, but it's just like uh, it's more of just getting bit. It's kind yeah. of like the whole. Well, it, yeah. The, I mean, because question- otherwise, how would you survive in this world well, exactly. if you got a scrape? <laughs> like everybody gets a scrape, <laughs> especially with all the running and jumping and climbing and falling off. Things. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So I wondered. Why didn't this, why hadn't that school been picked over? Yeah. If it's 10 years in, we figure that everything that's pickable has been picked, but yet there seemed like there was still a lot of stuff in that building. (laughs) You know, unless, unless the kudzu had taken over enough that nobody had paid any attention to it. But that's still a good point because it's, I have that about the fear when we talk about it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So. And so back to the gym, did anybody else wonder why the sign was still on the table and the, uh, brushes and paint were still out in the gym, in the gym? It was it like in the midst of the apocalypse, you know, they were starting to get ready for the dance and the world collapsed. And so all their art supplies are still laid out. (laughs) Yeah. It doesn't really make sounds like why they would be painting in the gym in the first place (laughs) well true you know like you would think they would be painting in the art room and then bring it out to the gym yeah because i think our our coaches would have lost their minds if you'd have been painting in the gym exactly (laughs) exactly now we did get some more crm nuggets this time barely well yeah 
but at least we got an explanation about A's and B's. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And um, I think we'll we'll talk about the very end a little bit more in a, in a bit, but it seems that for all the watching of all the teen angst, we are getting a little bit more information on CRM, but I'm beginning to agree with what some of the other guys have said is that is the payoff worth it? You know, in the end, through all this uh, angst and exposition we have to sit through, are are the small nuggets of CRM information, you know, worth it? I'll answer that. No. <laughs> <laughs> because because especially this week, it was a post credit scene. You know, it was it was like um you know, watching the end of the Avengers or, you yep. know, um, Morgan shows up at the end of no sanctuary. I mean, that's what it was. So it, it was barely a, a nugget. And, you know, I had to sit through 40 something minutes of just angsty teens being extra angsty. <laughs> and yeah. I, I just, for me, I, I just, I, well, I'll, I'll get to it when it's, when it's my turn, but, um, I just know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, and also we know that there's a whole nother season. So it's like, they're not going to give us everything. <laughs> I honestly, I tend to think that it was supposed to be a long running show and they like, it wasn't going to be a two season, but they saw the first season. They said, hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and so they they figured let's you know let's take the next season and wrap it up you know they may have they may have you know had two seasons with the option of going longer, longer but, but yeah. you know i i'm pretty sure well i you know i i don't know but it just for me uh, yeah. Uh, yeah yeah I'll, I'll i'll get into it in a minute well hopefully they'll fall asleep in the train and work, wake up in buffalo <laughs> uh, one thing one thing they did this episode that i have to give them props for is they actually did an old camping trick that they put their flashlight uh behind the water jug to dis- to diffuse the light oh that's interesting Just one thing i noticed because that's that's a trick that you use when you're hiking that if you put your flashlight behind your water bottle it makes the light more diffuse like a lantern Mm. but speaking of water so felix and alton go off to find containers to catch rainwater in they go to the lab they get a plastic bucket and that's the last time we saw it (laughs) so what happened to going to get water (laughs) indeed and then we had all those flashbacks with hope and her dad I mean, it added a little more information, a little more depth to, you know, what dad was up to and sort of why she's a bad girl, but it was just more flashbacks on top of more flashbacks. I mean, I didn't mind the flashbacks, but they were very repetitive. You know, the, 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 they didn't seem to tell me any more from flashback to flashback. It was all kind of the same flashback just times three or whatever it was yeah you know well if you didn't have anything else more to say because i basically don't (laughs) 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 i I watched it the one time and now that you guys are talking about it i'm like oh i don't even remember that scene (laughs) so i wasn't well paying attention (laughs) i only watched it the the one time, um, but I since I didn't have anything to say last week, and and it was such a chore for me to watch last week. Um, I did finally catch up, and I caught up. Not only watched that all the way through, but I watched this episode all the way through. And in fact, I forced myself even more by making myself watch World Beyond before I watch Fear. So. It was kind of, I kind of made it like a reward. So, um, <laughs> but, but I have to say just to, to get back to, uh, last week's episode that I, I really hate that they're putting in the stuff about the CRM at the end of the episode. Cause I did this again and, you know, I, 
like I hate it because if I had to give the episode a rating for last week, it would be a three up until we got to the CRM stuff and then it maybe went up to a six, you know, or a five and a half. Right. But it, it's just so tedious to to watch this show. And I, I'm tending to think I got this this vibe more uh, this episode is that if this show was something that had come out, say, in 2012 or something like that, it was kind of like, you know, your your teenagers walking dead. And it was something to get people in, you know, sort of like a, a, a lower, you know, like a TV 14 type of audience um, to get them to get into the walking dead. Um, I could see it working better, but we're 10 years into this. Nothing's new to, to it. And it, it just like, they're struggling with one walker and it's just like, Oh, and then you add on the angst and it's just like, Oh my God. <laughs> so it, it is really, really tough for, for me to get through this show. I I'm just, I mean, like I said, I, I watched it and I had strangely enough, although I had probably had more problems with this episode. Cause I think it, this last, the last episode, I just, I can't even tell you anything about it. <laughs> it just, I just, you know, I think yep. I just wiped it away from my memory. Um, but, but uh, this one, I mean, the only thing, or I'll just say for last week, the only thing that made it redeeming at all was the, you know, the, the thing with the Lieutenant Colonel and the Sergeant Major, which I know you guys talked about last week. Right. Uh, that was good. And, and, you know, it even went like a different direction than I thought it would right at the end, but I just, the rest of it, oh my God. Okay. So I thought it was funny that, um, Silas said, you know, oh, Sadie Hawkins. So she, I guess she used to go to that school. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, it did have a cool thing, but then they ended up doing nothing with it in the end like basically nothing with it. And that was the wolves. It's like, I, I kind of dug that like that. That was actually cool to see wolves, which we've not really seen in uh, any of the walking dead shows. Right. Uh, Cause I, I think that wolves were scary as hell. So, you know, I thought that was cool, but then they basically did nothing with it. Like all they did was, you know, sidestepped, uh, out of the way and then you know i guess we saw maybe a hint of it later but it's just like uh i it tell was you basically just like a cheap jump scare yeah yeah and i don't know just but i'll say as soon as we heard that silas was listening to a waltz i knew that's what they were where they were going and and that was the most painful thing I have seen in five years of watching TV. I just, that, that one scene, I just couldn't, uh, it's awful. So, um, it just, I, I, I said in, in the notes, I said that was painful to watch. Very. That was, you know, you know even, even with the extra haunted mansion dancey people around them. Yeah, it's just. Oh gosh, I don't even remember that. <laughs> so, okay, that's that's the that's the thing that got me. It's like, oh my god, they 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 pull out the the dancers. It's like, oh, come on, I do, I just don't I don't need to see this. I don't need to see this. Um, and the only other major thing to say about like the main plot was. It was a little gaffe that I noticed uh, Annette Mahendru's accent at one point. Like she, she's not originally from the U.S. She she's got this weird background. She's fr- was born in Afghanistan to um, an Indian father and a Russian mother, 
and they moved to the U.S. when she was 13. So, like, I don't know what her, like, natural accent is. I, I don't know if I've ever heard it. But she had, there was, especially in the um, the scene where they're, like, walking down a hallway, I think, and Huck uh, is trying to get them to turn back. That one scene, like, Hope's questioning her about it. Um, I could hear Huck, it, like, a a weird accent come out of her. Um, just certain words that she was saying, it just didn't it, like, it felt like, okay, she's trying to manufacture an accent out of this. Yeah. Cause it's, it's hard to place what she's doing when she's, you know, on spot. Yeah. It's kind of Southern maybe. And then like, like you said, it just slipped into something that was. Yeah. Odd. Yeah. Yeah. And then we get, you know, the post credit scene and, you know, we see that the, the test subject is from Portland, which is one of the other settlements and a doctor and could uh, obviously see, cause the guy had a funky beard, uh, worked with, you know, their dad. Uh, I assume that that was taken while they were there. So I guess not that long ago. So, you know, then we get bring on, bring in the next subject. So the question is, you know, is, is he alive? Is he dead? I assume he's alive or he better be. <laughs> um, and I, I don't know. I, I just, I don't like this kind of like structure of forcing me to watch 42 minutes of teenage angst to get one or two minutes of interesting, you know, tidbits right. <laughs> it's it's almost like you know watching a whole show and then but you have in order to get to the show or, or sorry and in order to get to it um get to an interesting webisode you have to watch the show so, so it's just uh because it, it would be better if they kind of like intersperse that throughout the show. So like, especially last week, they could have had those scenes, you know, interspersed throughout the show. So, cause if I wasn't like podcasting about the show, I probably wouldn't have been able to make it through, but I, I was, I was just like powering through and look at me. I didn't even get through. it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so anyway, that's all I've got to say about it, but I, I wanted to, for the listeners, I felt it was my duty to, uh, <laughs> to endure. So I did. Well, and just to, the last thing about the doctor scene at the end is that he was an A. He was an A. Yeah. He was an A, like what, A402? Yeah. Right, right. And so... Maybe that's a little hint on the, the A's and the B's. Probably is, yeah. Yeah, that's what it seems to be. And Rick was a B, so. And I'm Rick. guessing that the you know the doctor, um, father is a B as well. We'll find out. I don't know. Well, they had that. Like I said, the whole rack of you know A's in the cabinet. You know, it makes me think that, you know, they're doing aging studies, you know, see how long they survive. And it's just the whole, the whole thought of we've got a laboratory full of zombies and they're all neatly marked, numbered and stuck on gurneys. And again, you've said it. I want to find out more, but I don't know if I could stand sitting through 40 more minutes of what we're getting to get to. Yeah. And I'm sorry. I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to be saying that, but it's just like, ah, it's, yeah, it's tough. Well, hopefully as it progresses that they start getting closer to wherever this is in New York, then we'll get a little bit more, but yeah, if they start just kind of holding it, it's just being like, oh yeah, watch this show. Just like, um, you know, just like Badlands. <laughs> like, we got to get we got to get out of Nebraska. You have to go for, through the whole, like, yeah. Which that's we're already what in episode four. <laughs> so, yep. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, we'll see. All right. Well, thank you for that feedback, Brian and LT. I just didn't have any. 
But we did get some. <laughs> <laughs> we did get some from Dieta this time. So uh, she, next to her voicemail, which was awesome. But she did put this in here for uh, her feedback regarding the world beyond. And she said, "I just have some weak sauce regarding the teens non killing technique." And she put face palm emotion uh, emoji, face palm emoji. She said, Silas has the biggest wrench i've ever seen with some kind of spike on the end but constantly hesitates to use it and iris has the stabby spear thing but does not use it instead they insist on using their weapons to push the dead instead of killing what a bunch of wusses they will not survive if they keep this mentality up kill kill or keep killing or and keep killing Uh, she goes on and says another weak sauce with Silas punching out a very old dead head. So he just punched and punched and punched. And I think he would have hit concrete at, after the second punch, seeing how these dead should be very deteriorated since it, this is the future. And one punch should squash a head like a pumpkin. <laughs> you are uh, so right. Deanna, you're so <laughs> right with both points. It, it's just like, I don't get it. Like Silas, you got that sharp pointy wrench just use it. I mean, and, and, or, you know, if you want to use the, the big, the big side of it, you know, just smash, smash, but punching the guy. (sighs) (laughs) And you were talking about it too, LT. It's just like, make no sense at all. (laughs) Oh, well, I guess there's an agreement there. Dieto. It was the only reason why it was there was to show, you know, Silas go a little crazy and, and, you know, for him to push, uh, you know, corduroy boy. So, you know, I mean, that, that's all it was designed for, but I mean, no reason for it at all. Just, Oh, well, I'm glad. I it's didn't. like he won't snap and he won't snap and he won't do it. And then when he does do it, it's the worst possible choice of things to do. Well, right. I feel like I'm seeing this as like, these are the things that they do for obviously for some kind of plot reason. Yeah. And so, which I actually now, because I haven't seen this, you know, it's like with my comments um, before, it's like they do these things that just kind of like, okay, like. Why wouldn't you do this? It seemed very obvious that you would take this, like, you would do this thing. And instead, it's like, nope, we'll do the opposite just because that somehow, you know, like, gets them into the next room. You know, it's like, avoid all these things. Or like, you know, uh, you know, could have killed the walker with your wrench. But instead, we'll make you punch it, you know, just to, sh- you know, because we need you to do something right. that makes you look damaged. Well, that's exactly what it was. And, and we need you to brood so that yeah. Iris can pat your head and Yeah. And and it was very much like manufactured. Like it was the whole thing, okay. Well, you know, we need we need this character with this character and this character with this character. And then we'll put these two characters in and, you know, start like Yep. You know, are are they trying to like foster a romance between those two? Cause I don't know. It's just, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> it, it, they're, they're an odd couple to say the least. All right. Well, thank you, Dieta. And then that leads us into our news ratings and info. There's a couple weird stories on the news. All right. So we are back, or should I say I am back with ratings like I like to do. Uh, let's see here. So fear the walking dead got a 0.39 in the 18 to 49 with 1.501 million viewers. That's down a little, little tiny bit 0.44 in the 18 to 49 with 1.546 million viewers last week. World beyond was down slightly again. Uh, it got, a 0.28 in the 18 to 49 with 1.020 million viewers. That compares to last week's 0.30 in the 18 to 49 with 1.04 million viewers. Pretty consistent, um, I would say, both shows. So, um, you know, they they seem to be kind of like leveling the curve. (laughs) Sorry, a COVID joke. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but uh 
Yeah. And of course, no Talking Dead this week, so I can't give you uh, ratings for that. And as far as parrots this week, um, the Walking Dead had been you know, showing up in the top 10, but like we said, we didn't have anything for fear. And uh, I wondered if you know it was capturing fear just in general with the other show. Well, The Walking Dead did not show up in the Parrot Analytics numbers at all this week. So it fell out of the top 10. So, um, you know, the only thing I can say as far as Parrot Analytics has to do with the other show that I podcast about, Star Trek Discovery. It went up to number five this week from number six in the digital originals uh, section of the Parrot Analytics, which just means that uh, it was slightly it's not not quite in the overall but it's it's probably in the top 20 in the overall but but number five in digital so nice good (laughs) and of course all of that will change next week with the mandalorian uh coming out so i i imagine that that will probably be number one in both categories yeah i could see that for sure (laughs) yeah Yeah, and it didn't have really much news, at least that I could find. But I did notice that, like on Twitter today, that they and it seemed to kind of cross their multiple accounts of The Walking Dead. Um, there was like a picture of you know different parts of the cast, or they they kind of showed some of the like the fight scene on the beach or the rehearsal from last season. But then on the on the tweet, it was says after two weeks of multiple health screens and asking everyone to quarantine. I surprised my closest inner circle with a trip to a private island where we could pretend things were normal just for a brief moment in time. And it got retweeted and all that stuff, but I didn't see anything more than that. And I couldn't find anything, you know, no one, no one replied saying about it. So I'm I'm assuming it's kind of, Hey, they, you know, the production is ongoing and, you know, I don't know who this person is supposed to be or if it was just in general. So, I don't know. I thought it was interesting to hear. Uh, this this was for The Walking Dead. Yeah, for The Walking Dead. Um, but, like, Fear the Walking Dead retweeted it. Some of the other uh, non, you know, not connected to AMC. Uh, I think it's, like, The Walking Dead World Twitter account. But it just it got retweeted and tweeted, a, you know, a whole bunch today. So, I don't know. I just... Thought it was interesting, kind of fun to see, and also just kind of a little hopeful that, <laughs> you know, the show can go on. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we'll hear at some point about fear uh, resuming production. I I still haven't heard that. Yeah. The most I saw so. was like, it uh, is like, and they started back in August, but I thought there was something, at least a, a, pa- a pause, but I have not really seen more. Yeah. Because about- Texas has been having um, uh, yeah, an, like- a upsurge again. Yeah, for the second is. time. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Uh, to interact with us, uh, we encourage you to follow us on Twitter, and you can find us at Walking Dead TTM. Uh, to submit your theories and feedback, most people post in our designated episode thread in our Facebook group, and you can find that at facebook.com slash groups slash Walking Dead TTM. Uh, email us at Walking Dead at talkthroughmedia.com, and also we have our feedback form at talkthroughmedia.com slash feedback. Uh, to leave us a voicemail, you can call 216-232-6146, and and just a reminder, um, all our new episodes are on YouTube. Just search for Talk Through Media and remember to subscribe and click the bell um, to get notified uh, when we have new videos. Uh, the videos do go up first uh, before the podcast does. Um, so if you want to get it first, that's the best way to do it. All right. Another good way to support us is to like and review uh, the Talk Through Media Facebook page. And you can find that at facebook.com slash talk through media. And also, the best way you can support us is in our Patreon, and that is at patreon.com slash walkingdeadtalkthrough, uh, and we would like to thank our Patreon supporters, Clint McCollum and Lawrence Todd <laughs> over there. Um, I'm not sure if we, I mean, we are going to probably do something for Patreons, uh, or just maybe open it up to like, maybe do like, we could have, you know, some of our listeners maybe join us for a live call to, on one of these episodes. And so we'll have something, uh, we're looking forward to the, are they going to have a mid season break? Oh no, they will for sure. Cause so we could have our cumulative mid season break 
chat session. Chat so yeah, totally. And just kind of get reactions. And so just stay tuned and also, you know, uh, uh, definitely go support us over at patreon.com and we would very much appreciate it. Uh, you can also subscribe to us in Apple Podcasts or your podcast client of choice. And while you're there, give us a rating or review. Uh, you can also leave us a review at podchaser.com, and that's where you can actually rate individual episodes, or you can actually just rate the whole podcast as a whole. So any of those steps definitely helps us move up and you know help us, you know, listeners find us. Um, so do definitely try to like do that there if you like what you're hearing. Um, but another one of the biggest things that really helps us is to share a post on Facebook and Twitter um, when we post them or tell a friend because word of mouth is the best way to get us new listeners. And just remember that if you want to share those podcasts on Facebook, do it through the Talk Through Media group. Those are openly available as opposed to the actual Walking Dead group, which is a closed group. Yes, very important. Mm-hmm. So if you see us on Facebook, go ahead and like those posts and share those posts. Uh, we'll be putting out notifications for the podcast on Twitter. So if you see us on Twitter, like and retweet. definitely retweet. <laughs> yep, exactly. That helps us so, 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 so much. All right. Well, uh, you can also listen to some of our. Uh, I know some of you already are less listening to Brian um, over doing the Star Trek Discovery podcast. Um, I uh, cover helped him cover Star Trek Lower Decks, and now we are in episode three. I think coming up of Star Trek Discovery. That yes. is right. Um, so definitely go over there, check them out with uh, Brian and Ruthie, um, and you can find that Star Trek Discovery Podcast dot com or uh, at the Facebook group, which is uh, Facebook dot com slash group Star Trek TTM Podcasts. Um, they also have a, a, a Patreon for those podcasts, and you can find those at Patreon dot com slash Brian and Ruthie. Uh, all right. Well, next, um, with Fear of the Walking Dead, um, season six, episode four is called The Key, which we already had some discussion about. The Key. Uh, written by David Johnson. Um, don't know who it's directed by. And uh, World Beyond is on season one, episode five, and it's titled Madman Across the Water. Mm. We assume it's not Elton John. Nope. <laughs> And definitely, yeah, there was no description that I could find, so we'll just leave it at that. (laughs) All right. right. So until next time, I'm Kyle. And I'm LT. And this is Fear of the Walking Dead Talk. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody.